With thyroid issues, it's often the seed of illness years or even decades before you show up with hypothyroid or Hashimoto's. Within traditional Chinese medicine and even conventional medicine, there is often a three-part setup that I see. There's a progression that leads to the development of thyroid issues where they are now at a clinical stage requiring medication or treatment. The reason I share this video is that if you can recognize some of these other signs and symptoms before, you can minimize the possibility of needing thyroid medication for the rest of your life. So let's jump in and let's talk about these some more. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. Let's get into the three-part trifecta. So when we talk about what leads to thyroid issues, you will have lots of functional doctors that will say the thyroid is only a tail end effect or it's not the primary cause, it's secondary to something else. In a lot of ways, I view that to be true, but what I see clinically from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view is that you have three main parts. You have part one or phase one is what we call the predisposing factors of constitution or your genetic makeup. Let's just face it, some people legitimately have weak stock. It runs in the family, thyroid issues, just like migraines run in some families or GI issues run in some families or Less commonly, certain cancers run in some families, heart disease. There is a predisposing factor. Predisposition or genetics most of the time only means increased chance. Does not mean you will have. That's the good news. But the chance is increased. It's like if I'm a clumsy person, there's an increased chance I'm gonna fall. So I should be careful. Part two is what we call, there is a long-term deficiency. Now, the long-term deficiency that we see in traditional Chinese medicine is often what modern people, I would say, call leaky gut. Typically people with thyroid issues come in, they have a lot of gut issues, but a lot of them have had gut issues for decades. Traditional Chinese medicine, if you go to an acupuncturist, they'll probably tell you spleen chi deficiency. This is an issue with the stomach and typically the pancreas function and the small intestine functioning. These people have SIBO, they have leaky gut, they have lots of food allergies and dietary sensitivities. And look, if 80% of the serotonin is produced in the gut and a huge staggering percentage of your immune system functioning comes from your gut functioning, it's no surprise that you end up with an autoimmune disease after decades of some degree of gut issues. And then, the straw that broke the camel's back, this is the big one, there is an inciting event. People come in, they think my divorce, my stressful job, my startup working 100 hours a week, this kind of thing caused my Hashimoto's, my hypothyroid. And it is one third true, but it was only the trigger because if there was no predisposition, there was no longer term deficiency beforehand, if you had the trigger, you may still get sick, but it may not be hypothyroidism quite a deep level of deficiency and illness that in conventional medicine, they'll give you meds till the day you die. They don't care if you're 17 or if you're 50. When you're on that, it's like high blood pressure medication. You're taking this till the day you die from their point of view. So this trifecta is very important. Constitution or genetics. There's a pre-existing or a through lifestyle long-term deficiency that often involves the gut or nervous system dysregulation, right? People who are having insomnia, anxiety, heart palpitations. And then the inciting event, which is not even the event, but is the straw that broke the camel's back. These three are often present for development of hypothyroid. Now, if you guys are curious where a lot of your symptoms have come from, whether they are more gut or they are more exhaustion or they are more nervous system, don't forget to check out the free quiz I've put together, which is a root cause quiz. According to traditional Chinese medicine, your symptoms probably come from one of these five organs or these physiological pathways. It's a 10 page handout I've put together. It also, in a really helpful way, links to a lot of the other videos we've produced here that talk about specifically where those symptoms come from. It's the link below this video, check it out and download it because it is going to be very, very helpful for this. But let's jump into more specifics on each one of those right now. When we talk about constitution or genetics, something you see clinically quite a lot in traditional Chinese medicine is that certain families have certain organ systems that are genetically weaker. So this sounds bizarre, but in Chinese medicine, hypothyroidism is what we call a kidney deficiency. The kidney being like, you know, ancient doctors called it like the gate of life, Ming men. You even see this though, in very severe autoimmune diseases will often attack the kidneys, right? You see that. You do see that with lots of life-threatening autoimmune disease. And so it's interesting, right? There's a real one-to-one -one correlation there sometimes. Some families like my own, it's the lungs or digestive system. Asthma genetically runs in my family. That is a lung chi deficiency. Digestive problems run in my family. People tend to be thin because they have poor digestion. We call that a spleen chi or pancreatic enzyme deficiency. So within each family is the seeds of certain illnesses. And some people it's migraines, some it's menstrual irregularities, some it's the GI. Understanding that it's really important to prevent that from becoming a serious illness. You can have any susceptibility and it's very rare that just by itself if there's a genetic trait or you have the genetics for a disease, 
it's rare that there's a one-to-one -one correlation, meaning you will get it. Majority of the time you can prevent that, aka never get that by living in a certain way, eating a certain way and being careful. When we talk about that longer term deficiency, the most common one we see clinically is typically digestive. And if you guys have ever seen the five phases in traditional Chinese medicine, you know, like fire, earth, metal, water, wood, that whole thing, seems like an esoteric mystical thing, but it's also clinical. One thing you see is the earth has a relationship to the water. It's called the generating cycle. And when we say the earth is deficient, the earth is weak, the earth does not feed the water. So when the earth organs, spleen, stomach, pancreas, digestive organs are weak, that leads to deficiencies elsewhere. So for example, we say that for people who develop like anemia, we say that often there's been several decades of digestive dysfunction underneath that. People that come in with anemia, not always, but a high percentage of the time have a lot of gut symptoms and very, very weak digestion. So we say the spleen generates the blood. Very interesting, very unique, distinct to Chinese medicine kind of concept. But what you see clinically is that lots of the formulas, for example, used in integrative cancer care, they're purely digestive formulas from a TCM point of view, but they have amazing effects on blood values. Like some of my patients undergoing conventional care for cancer, like chemotherapy, when their blood values drop low enough, they can no longer continue treatment because it's too dangerous. These formulas have been shown to buffer that damage and improve those blood value again. But when you look at the herbs, their herbs we say work for digestive dysfunction, low appetite, bloating, loose stools, spleen chi deficiency, but they actually will improve blood values. We say the spleen generates some of these deeper resources, but in this case, long-term spleen chi pancreatic deficiency can lead to that kidney deficiency which is where hypothyroid begins. Finally, there's always a trigger. Two most common triggers, I'll tell you, divorces and people with high stress jobs. Doctors, lawyers, people working in New York, LA, SF that have a lot of responsibilities and lots of pressure, startup founders. These four are probably the most common patterns I see for people who go through extreme stress and come out with hypothyroid or autoimmune disease on the other side. There's always a trigger, but the trigger did not cause it. Very important to remember. So three aspects in the development of hypothyroidism that I hope help you. Don't forget, if you want work one-on-one -on -one with me in my private practice in LA or virtually via telemedicine, you can reach out to me or my clinic at dralexheim.com forward slash clinic. There's also info below this video to call us or send us an email. And don't forget, download the root cause quiz. Click this little card, it'll bring you to it. It's useful and it's helpful. And before you go, another video right here that will help you figure out exactly the cause of some of your problems.